Well, welcome everyone. It's, uh, it's great to have you all here tonight. And uh, in these somewhat uncertain times, I remember what uh, my father once said to me in the twilight of his years when the day was fading into night. He said, you know, Rolf, we're all going to die one day, but I don't think it's today. So let's enjoy ourselves. And uh, enjoy ourselves, I think we will tonight. And in fact, uh, the lady in the shop told me these shoes were especially good for dancing. I never wore patent leather shoes before, but she sold me on the fact that they were especially good for dancing. I said, well, if that's the case, you better give me two in case I wear the first pair out. <laughs> I would uh, like to especially welcome here tonight the Assistant Minister, Senator, the Honourable Amanda Stoker, Senator Susan MacDonald, Special Envoy for Northern Australia, Senator Jared Rennick, a friend and a great supporter of the Heart of Australia program, the member for Nanango, Deb Frecklington, MP, the Mayor of Gundawindi, Lawrence Springborg. Lawrence, I recall back in 2013 sitting in your office asking you for assistance when you were the Health Minister, and I'd like to take this moment to thank you for your assistance at the time. Also, I'd like to uh, welcome the Mayor of Dolby, Paul McVeigh, and representing our foundation partner, Arrow Energy, Michelle Zonbrecker, the Acting Vice President for External Relations and Tenure Management, as well as the CEO of the Queensland Farmers Federation, Dr Georgina Davis, the Australian Government and the Department of Health. Our major sponsors, IOR Petroleum, Anglo-American, Packer and Brown and Hurley, St Andrews War Memorial Hospital, Toyota, Phillips, Bayer, Telstra, QML Pathology, Fraser's Livestock Transport, Janssen, Bridgestone, Servier, IMED Radiology, NTI Insurance, and Rampant Technology. I welcome you all and I thank you for your support. It's an unusual list. Here we are celebrating a health program with sponsors whose core business entail gas exploration, trucking, telecommunications, airlines, automobiles. And why is that? Because when things matter to us, we make it our business. Because Heart of Australia is as much to do about who we are as it is to do about what we do. And so who are we? Well, we believe that Fred, with a wife and three children who lives in Augatella, and is racing to plant a crop, having had three years of drought and it's just rained, but is now experiencing pain in his chest every time he rolls a bale of hay, should have the chance to have a stress test. The same way Bob, who works in the city and had pain in his chest on his morning jog, saw his GP in his lunch break and is booked to have a stress test in a day. We believe that Mary, who is Indigenous and lives in Palm Island, expecting her first child and has been told she has a heart murmur, should have the opportunity to have a cardiac echocardiogram the same way Susan, who lives in Paddington and is expecting her first child and also has a heart murmur, is booked to have one tomorrow. In essence, we believe that those living in the country are equally deserving of a chance of a long and healthy life. We believe our Indigenous brothers and sisters are deserving of equal life expectancy. We believe the pain and suffering of country patients and the loss experienced by spouses, their children, their grandchildren, their workmates and their friends is no less than that of those living in the city. Our beliefs frame our conscience and shape our actions and as I look around the room, I see many who have been on this journey with, our, with us, believing in a better, better tomorrow, but more importantly, believe in changing the status quo. As Mandela once said, it always 
seems impossible until it's done. So where are we now? Is Heart of Australia an infant, an adolescent, a teenager, an adult? Well, six years down the track with five trucks in operation, having seen over 12,000 patients and saved perhaps 500 lives, I feel we have emerged from the awkwardness of our teenage years and are now entering the most productive phase of the journey. We have a proven track record, a model which works, and learnings we have gained along the way which can now be applied across multiple domains. But most of all, I feel we have an incredible team and allies in the form of government, sponsors, supporters, patients, communities. These formidable booster rockets strapped to our sides which will propel Heart of Australia into orbit. So where then lies the new frontier? Is it a point in time? Is it a milestone along the way? Is it a place? Well, it might be all of those things, but I think as far as Queensland is concerned, and thanks to the federal government who have assisted in the construction of Heart Fort, the, the fabulous clinic outside, and allowed us to extend our footprint to a further nine communities across the state, it would be fair to say we have Queensland covered. Whilst the current global situation has put plans to expand nationally on the back burner, this goal continues to be a priority. It makes sense, and in fact, in just the last 12 months, we have had 165 patients travel from New South Wales across the border to access the Heart for Australia clinics. But you know, beyond where we go, it's also about what we do. <clears throat> and in medicine, to some extent, you can only treat what you can find. And how do we find stuff? We ask questions, examine patients, and do tests. And despite a clinician's bedside skills and what can be discovered from blood tests, sometimes you just have to have a look inside. And how do we look inside? Well, to a large extent with x-rays, CT scans, MRIs. And so when the Queensland Government, the Department of Mines, asked if Heart of Australia would be interested in jointly building a truck with an x-ray and CT to assist in the screening of coal and dust-related lung diseases, the answer was absolutely. Next year will mark a new milestone for Heart of Australia as we branch into mobile radiology for the bush. And what does it mean for people in the bush? Well, if you live a thousand kilometres out west and have a cough which won't, which won't go away, and you've tried some antibiotics and maybe a few puffers, maybe even had a chest x-ray which seems okay, but the cough lingers, and at this stage you really should have a CT scan of your chest. But travelling to have one is just not possible. After all, there are cattle to muster, dams to repair, a wife recovering from a hip operation, not to mention the costs. So you say to yourself, well, we did have a dust storm go through here not long ago. Maybe it was that. She'll be right. And now the tyranny of distance starts to raise its ugly head, but this time we'll be there to chop it off. Because with Heart 5 at your doorstep, you will have that CT scan. And if you do have a tumour, we'll find it when it's the size of a pea, not the size of a tennis ball. The sad truth is that cancer outcomes, and for most types of cancer, are worse for country folk when compared to city dwellers. And part of the reason is the delay in diagnosis. And again, you can only treat what you can find and with the launch of Heart 5, a CT truck, we will be finding more, treating more, and saving more lives. But this isn't just a CT scanner in a truck, one that's dependent on mains power, which needs to be parked and plugged into a hospital. This will be the world's first battery-operated CT scanner, designed and built right here in Queensland a CT scanner which can do a scan parked in a paddock or a cane field. Ploughing up the tyranny of distance, which has for so long made essential services unreachable for those outside our cities. And so we continue on our mission, innovating our way towards equity. And when I say we, 
I'm so proud to say that as we take this next step, by our side we have two technology heavyweights, IMED Radiology and Philips, joining us as program partners, doing much of the heavy lifting. I sincerely thank you for your support and have no doubt we will be sharing some very exciting times ahead. So tonight I've talked to you about our heart trucks and new technology. They're exciting, they're impressive, and they're essential to serving rural and regional communities. They are a core part of our mission, but they are not the only tool we need to, he to help end health inequity for people living in the outback. In order to deliver health services in rural and regional Australia, you need healthcare professionals, including rural GPs, allied health professionals, and visiting medical spe specialists such as those who provide services in the Heart of Australia clinics. Attracting and retaining healthcare professionals in rural areas continues to be a very serious challenge to many communities. It is something that must be addressed if we are to ensure rural communities have the same access to quality healthcare as their Australian cousins living in the cities. In 2016, a young backpacking student by the name of Naja Kushki from Germany bumped into one of the trucks and she asked if she could spend two weeks with the Heart of Australia team. Her days with us were fantastic and when she returned to Germany she published an article in her university magazine retelling her tales of rolling around the bush with the Heart of Australia team. What followed was a steady flow of inquiries from international and local medical students keen for the same opportunity. We quickly put two and two together and realised that, delivered correctly, we had an opportunity to build the future sustainability of the Heart of Australia workforce and support the recruitment and retention of rural GPs and health professionals for rural communities. With the assistance of the federal government and headed up by the very super capable Juanita Wheeler, the Heart of Australia Next Gen Medics program was launched in the spring of 2020. Having now taken 12 medical and allied health students on the road, it's obvious the potential this program has in terms of boosting the rural medical workforce. Later on, we will hear from some of our next gen alumni themselves. So I'll leave them to share their experience. But when I think back to my time as a medical student, I certainly would have enjoyed the opportunity. And if inspired to, to contribute to rural health, they also know they can return to a program which now exists and can facilitate their participation. They can join a family of like-minded clinicians sharing a common purpose to contribute, create and celebrate doing things which define us as a compassionate and civilised society. Where we look beyond our own backyards to improve the circumstances of our fellow human beings. One of the unifying traits that runs through the members of the Heart of Australia team is working to work, make the world better. It has been a very challenging 18 months and at times I know it is this value, this commitment to making a difference that has allowed them to rise and tackle every imaginable challenge that was thrown at them. I could not be more thankful and proud of our team. Finally, for the students here with us tonight, a thought. As you progress in your careers and life becomes busier, take the time to close your eyes and remember how you felt when you first decided you wanted to do medicine or something in health. How you felt when you opened the letter of acceptance into your course. How you felt sat when you sat waiting to go into your entrance interview. Why you so badly wanted to work in health, to ease suffering and help people. Those feelings will help you refocus when the white noise of running a practice, the long hours, the stress of exams, practice politics, or other issues weigh you down. Remember your time with Heart of Australia, the red dust and the roads stretching into the horizon, the worn faces, the watery eyes,
the broad-brimmed hats and the calloused rough hands which you shook, the toothy grins and the laughs we had along the way. But most of all, remember, you're always welcome back should one day you wish to be part of this amazing Heart of Australia family. Your country needs you. Thank you very much.